well anyway welcome back to my youtube channel and i hope you're all doing really well and i just hope you enjoy that small little clip from before and now let's just hop into the real video where i tell you everything that you need to know about pathology this has probably been one of the most requested videos on my channel and i'm really sorry for keeping the long wait but it's finally here and i really do hope you benefit from this and i'm going to tell you a lot of points so get a pen and paper and just make a few points that you really think is uh, important and that you think that will stay with you and that will help you and without any further ado let's get on with this video anyway before we begin uh, just a quick reminder do subscribe to this channel and give this video a big thumbs up if you help if it helps you and do share it with your friends i know it might help all of you uh, ace your exam study well study better and use more effective methods to your preparation for your preparation so do give it a big thumbs up and it would help me as well and uh, i know your exams are coming soon and i think this video will be really helpful for you so i'm without any further ado let's hop on to this video so many of you have been asking me about how you can study robins what books you need to re really use for path your pathology preparation in your second year of mbbs and how to write exams in your paper like how to present your answers how to go about your preparation what are the main things that you need to focus on and how you can actually make notes or any other things that you can that can help you for your preparation so in this video i'm going to address all of these issues all of these things and hopefully it will help you and let's get on with it so starting with the resources there are many resources on the market and usually most students are confused whether they have to actually take up robins whether they have to do ramdas nayar whether they have to do harsh mohan or any other books these are the three usually the three more most popular books that are available that students usually take up and what i suggest you to do is just keep robins as your main book for preference and you can keep ramdas as like your preparatory manual it honestly is a really good book it will help you build on the basis if your basis is robins so what you can do is use these two books and you can proceed with your preparation i honestly don't think you should use harsh mohan as well this might just be very tedious and very confusing for you to use multiple books but what uh, ramdas is just basically a concised like a concise book of robins so i don't think it will be a much deviation from your studies so i think you can do this combination and it can be really good for your preparation moving on to the first aspect of this video that is how to read robins how you can approach it how you can use it and how uh, you can make it simpler uh, i know it's a really huge book it has a lot of information lot of text and it's so many students they're like how can you read robins and honestly uh, it just requires your time and it's not really hard to read robins so i'm going to tell you how you can start with reading robins so mainly what you need to understand about pathology is that it is discussed under three main headings that is one is general pathology one is hematology and one is systemic systemic pathology so when you open robins and you look through the content page you see in the part 1 book the contents include it starts with cell death inflammation hemodynamic changes neoplasia infective disorders and so on so what you need to understand is even when you come to systemic chapters so suppose a re renal system a uh, lung lung diseases cardiovascular diseases so what you need to understand that is for even for systemic diseases uh, the progression of the chapter goes just as follows of um, general pathology so if you take renal system for example it starts with inflammation of the kidneys that is nephritic syndrome nephritis and and, and it goes on to infective that is post streptococcal post streptococcal glomerular nephritis and so on and neoplasia coming to all the tumors of the renal system so what i suggest you to do is make your general pathology strong that is use robins for general pathology and your systemic chapters will become easier as well and as i said just do general pathology mainly from robins you can refer to systemic chapters from ramdas nayak that is your preparatory manual so how you can start about uh, studying robins is just uh, once just do a speed speed read just go through the entire chapter see all the headings that all the topics are discussed under so this will get you a good clarity about what the chapter is and what the contents are actually about so when you do your first reading of robins uh, make sure you underline whatever uh, is uh, important such as important words such as when you start with inflammation cell death uh, just underline all your necrosis all the types of necrosis and make sure you read those boxes that are given in robins that might be in pink yellow orange it's usually given in the side of uh, 
each pages. So this is what is actually important, which actually uh, consists of all the features, morphological features, the types, and everything that you actually need to remember more than all the reading the entire text. So when you do a first reading, just, just read the text just for your knowledge and just make sure you underline all these boxes, highlight all these boxes. So when you go over it again, you'll only be looking at these important things. So it's like you have read Robbins, you know the content and you'll, you'll be able to reproduce it in your exams. And as you start reading Robbins, do make notes just of the main chapters, that is the general part of a pathology. Just make small notes, like two, three pages. I'll show you how I made notes for general part of pathology. So you can do this as uh, followers and then it'll be easier so that you don't have to again go back to reading Robbins. And you can just uh, read your notes that is actually you've made from Robbins itself. So apart from making tiny notes, you can also uh, use sticky notes like those uh, post-its in front of each important thing. Like suppose you're reading system chapters for from Robbins. For each main disorder, you can take a post-it, just stick it right there in the page. And then you can write the morphological features, all the features that you need to remember. So that when you go over it again, you're just looking at these things. You don't have to really go from top to bottom of every chapter. So make sure you use these kind of things, make small, small notes, small, small points. Uh, from each page of Robbins and this is how you can easily read Robbins and easily retain everything as well. So that's the gist about how you can go about Robbins. So it may not be too tedious, just do not waste time as soon as you start second year of MBBS. You just start reading, just go for it. Just start from the beginning and then hopefully while, once you start going through it, once you start progressing through the chapters, it'll become easier for you. And if something is really difficult from Robbins, it's okay. You don't have to force yourself to read it. It's okay. You can just skip it and read it from another book such as Ramdas. So just main things, make sure you read it from Robbins. These are the ones that are applicable in systemic chapters as well, systemic diseases as well. So you get, get the understanding and you're able to apply it there as well. So this uh, concludes the first part of the video and moving on to the second part that is how you can actually present your answers. So as all of you know, uh, you just you do study for your knowledge, but what actually fetches you marks is how you write the paper, how you write your answers. So many times you'll be very knowledgeable about the topic, but you might not know how to reproduce it in your answer paper. So I'll just give you small tips as to how you can present your answers. So another book that you need to uh, use when it comes to this is the Singhi, that is your companion for second year of MBBS. So you know which are the main questions that you need to focus on and main uh, questions that you know which will come in the paper and you can uh, give more attention to these questions. So do buy this book, keep this alongside with you when you're doing your preparation for your exams. So coming to how you can actually write your answers for each question that you study, each question that you focus on, uh, so mainly what you need to do is just go through the preparatory manual that is Ramdas Nayak and you'll see a lot of flowcharts for each question, a lot of picture, a lot of diagrammatic representations. So make sure when you read one thing from Robin, suppose you're reading necrosis or apoptosis, make sure you simultaneously keep the other book next to you and make sure you practice all those flowcharts that are given for each uh, topic regarding each topic. So in this way, you can easily write your answer paper as well and not miss out on the knowledge from Robbins as well. So make sure you read all the flowcharts all the diagrams and make sure when you're reading the pathogenesis of each systemic disorder, you read it in such a way that you're able to write it in the form of a flowchart when it's asked as a question in your paper. So in this way, you can maximize your studying and you can also not lose out on your answer script. And one more thing about writing answers is you need to write it under, usually under these headings, that is you start with the definition. You always, just two, three lines, just write the definition of what they've been asked or uh, what question you have been asked on and write two, three lines of definition, just an introduction and then move on towards the pathogenesis. That's the main part. So when you write pathogenesis, make sure you write it in a flowchart or just write it in points. So it's good for the examiner when they correct it. And then moving after the pathogenesis, make sure you write the features. That's the main part. That is uh, the morphological features. And you um, divide this as cross and microscopic. So, and one more main thing is you need to draw the histopathological diagram the H and E diagram. So make sure you have your H and E pencils and wherever applicable, do draw this. It'll fetch you a lot of marks and you can refer this from your manuals, your lab records, manuals. And even in the textbook, there is always a microscopic picture, a histopathological diagram. So make sure you draw that and under that, just write gross features. Make sure you write all the gross features of the same disease and make sure you write the microscopic features. So these are the very important aspects to writing your paper and writing answering to the question that they have asked.
so uh, helping you understand this with an example is if they ask you a question regarding wilms tumor usually they'll just in the paper it'll just be given wilms tumor so it is understood that you need to define it what is it the pathogenesis the genetics part of it and the morphological features and the histopathological diagram and you can also add clinical features and the prognosis part which is not very important when it comes to pathology but you can always add this on so you can start with introduction so wilms tumor is also called as nephroblastoma and you can write it's the primary uh, congenital tumor in uh, children and then you can just give an introduction brief introduction two three lines and then you can move on with the pathogenesis and the genetics part of it so here you can mention all the genes and how uh, this disease actually comes about and after this you can write the morphological uh, features so here draw the histopathological diagram and all the blastemal cells or everything all the features make sure you write it under this and make sure you do not miss out on the gross features as well so this is how you can go about writing your answer for each uh, question and not only systemic for uh, general and hematological uh, pathology also you can do the same make sure you incorporate a lot of flow charts diagrammatical representations these are really good when you write the answers and it also helps with your understanding so this was a gist as to how you can write your answers and how you can actually score well by writing these answers in pathology so moving on from this uh, one more main important tips that will help you for your exams for pathology is repeated revision so uh, just whatever you have studied keep revising it repeatedly when you have just two months in hand before your final exams so when you keep revising it um, helps you recollect helps you retain and it's much better for you you will not tend to forget it before your exams so make sure you revise all the main questions and keep revising the same things over and over again so come coming to an end of this video make sure you repeatedly revise all the concepts make sure you practice all the histopathological diagrams make sure you recollect all the morphological features gross as well as microscopic and make sure you recall everything before your exams so you actually remember everything so that's about everything that i have to tell you about pathology and if you do follow these tips follow these uh, methods i'm pretty sure you can score really well and not miss out on your knowledge as well and if you have any other specific clar clarifications any doubts do feel free to comment down below about anything and if you want any other request if you have any requests for me to do uh, do let me know it will help me make something for you uh, help me help you so uh, do comment down below and give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more such videos i'll be really really help uh, grateful to help you and that's about it this video comes to an end here and i hope you have some clarity about pathology and if you do again give this video a big thumbs up and share it with your friends uh, and i think that's it for this video and i'll catch you in the next one and until then take care and bye bye